All right, now we're going to move on to section 7.3, which has, um, instead of just talking about the standard curve like we were in 7.2, where everything was z-scores, down here in 7.3, we're going to be working with scores where they're not always standard. They're just going to be any normal curve. So every normal curve has its own mean and its own standard deviation, and they're all different. So how do we do it then? And the answer is pretty much the same way we already did. <laughs> okay, so for example, here, I want to find the probability, now look here, see? I want the probability that x is less than 25, but the mean of this distribution is 20 and the standard deviation is 2. How do you do that? Okay, well you go second distribution, pick normal CDF just like before, and you want it, um, let me, sorry, bring this back, you want to the left, see, less than. Well, how far left does a curve go? Forever, right? It goes to negative infinity on the left-hand side, right? So you're going to have to go negative infinity, but the calculator doesn't do negative infinity. So you got to do negative 1 e, so second, comma, there we go, 9, 9, comma, 25. Don't stop there, though. That's where we would stop when it was z-scores, but 25 is not a z-score. I mean, it could be, but it would be huge, right? Because z-scores are usually, I don't know, somewhere between negative 3 and 3, right? That's kind of a normal range. All right, so now I'm going to tell it an extra comma. I want to tell it what the mean was. Well, the mean was 20, comma, and then i got to tell it what the standard deviation is close parentheses, right? And I wrote it right here. Normal CDF, lower, upper, mean, standard deviation. That's what you got to do. Okay, so now I press enter, and there it is. That probability is 0 0.99379. Done. Cool. Now, what about the next one? I want the probability that it's either less than 165 or, see that word or? very important, greater than 200. Now the OR thing is the same thing we ran into in the last one. It separates two different tails. So what I'm really talking about is like the left-hand tail being dark and the right-hand tail being dark. But what we're going to do is we're going to be crafty and we're going to find the middle. I'm going to find the area in between those two values. So let me go here. Second, enter. I'm just going to get the same thing back that I did before. Left, 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 left. Oop, not too far. There we go. Okay, I'm going to type 165, comma, 200, comma, 180, comma, 12. What I'm telling the calculator to do is to find the area in between those two numbers. Okay? It's not what we want, but it's okay. So I'm going to press enter. Okay, it's saying, look, the area in between these two, this guy's on the left, this guy's on the right, the area in between the two of them is 0.846559, blah. Now, what I really want is the area that's not in between the two of them, the complement. So what I'm going to do is 1 minus that answer. Enter. And there you go. It's 0 0.15344. Now, one other way you could have done it, let me just show it to you real quick. I could have done 1 minus, gone to distributions, picked normal CDF, and then typed 165, oopsie, except I didn't do 65, right? Comma 200, comma 180, comma 12. Okay? See it? It's, it's saying do it all at once. Do 1 minus this function. Do 1 minus this center probability. Then when you press enter, see? Same answer. So you can find it in two separate steps, or you can find it all in one step. Alrighty, cool, we're done with that, and I will see you next time for using <laughs> inverse norm, probably. That's probably what's coming. Nope, it looks like more normal CDF at first. Alright, I'll see you then.